Hi, Catherine Walters from The Knitted Raven here again today, and I'm really excited. This is the day we actually put it all together. All the bits that you've been making as you uh, work your way through the Wire Working 101 series. Well, today's the day it becomes a wearable piece of jewelry. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It helps me keep doing what I'm doing. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. And as I said previously, today is the day that we put it all together. Um, if you have been working your way through the uh, Wire Knitting 101 series, you have practiced your wire wrapped loop, you have learned to do Viking style wire knitting, you have also learned to make a clasp. You've also learned to make the cuffs necessary to finish the ends of the Viking wire knitting the way I like to. You're also going to need a set of beads to sit on top of your cuffs, and I'll show you about that in a minute. You'll want some Pro Polish pads to clean as we go. You'll want uh, some 20 gauge wire. You're also going to need chain nose pliers, uh, sorry, round nose pliers, a pair of square nose pliers, actually two is handier, chain nose pliers, cutters gauge to cut 20 gauge wire, you're also going to want either a soft measuring tape or a ruler. Choice is yours. Okay, so the first thing I like to do, even though I've stored my wire knitting in a um, plastic bag, is I like to uh, run a Pro Polish pad over it and I just ease it through very gently, not pressing too hard, but pressing hard enough to give it a clean. I go in one direction and then I will go in another. If you are using steel wool to clean yours, you will need to get a pair of tweezers and pick out any little tufts of steel wool that end up left behind because invariably there will be. I used steel wool when I first started out and uh, yeah, discovered that uh, Viking wire knitting can also pick up woolies. This will also give you a chance to see if you actually got all the little wire bits tucked away um, when you were finishing off your chain. So, behold, wire that has been kept in a, a plastic bag still oxidizes. That is the way of the world with wire. Now, some of you will have a much shorter length of Viking wire knitting than I've got here. Um, and some of you may be wanting to measure, or sorry, make a bracelet. What I'm going to do is finish one end of this first. And I'll explain to you why. In order to calculate the total length you're going to need, you need to know what happens when all of this is attached to your end. See? Bracelets do need to actually fit, and they're not as forgiving as necklaces. Um, so I always start by finishing one end, then I measure basically everything that I've added on to the end of wire. And I make sure that the bit that includes the collar, the bead, and the wire wrapped loop, that I add that on to the total length because of course there'll be one on the other side. And then I figure that into how long this needs to be. I hope that wasn't too complicated. Um, I'll write it out in the description box just to make it a little easier to follow. But the first thing you're going to need is a length of a 20 gauge wire. I usually cut myself a couple of inches at least. I'll show you why. Just to make it easy to see, that's probably more than I need. But it has been a while since I have done this, so you're getting to see how much of my muscle memory works. Now, remember when we put this through the draw plate? Um, the draw plate had measurements on it and I said it's helpful to know how wide your finished VK actually is because it, I think I ended up with a four millimeter needle or sorry a four millimeter diameter so I used a four millimeter needle to uh, wrap the wire around to create my collar or cuff that way I've got a pretty close fit right out of the gate one of the things I will do is I'll go back in and I'll trim off just the top little bit so I've got an even row. So that's, that's flatter now, as you can see. 
And then I take my fingers and I gently pinch. And then I start to roll it in between my fingers because I want to be able to fit it up into that cuff. So I roll and I roll and they say, how much do you roll? Well, I roll enough so that I can get the tip up in there. Now, I'm also going to need to fit some wire up in there. So I keep twisting and gently compressing until I've got a decent amount about the length of the cuff. Okay? And the next thing I do is I try to go in from side to side. Now you'll notice again, oh, there we go. I've gone in about parallel and that's on purpose. Okay? Um, and then the reason that's on purpose is because, quite frankly, um, you need to be able to distribute the pressure because you're going to pull that pull this into this. So I take my chain nose pliers and I'm going to turn up an edge at a 90 degree angle. So I end up with something like this. If you've taken on a little bit too much, you can always trim off the end. I'm going to tell you now that sometimes it takes two tries to do this. And the reason for that is quite simple. Um, nothing in jewelry making like this, when you're doing work like this, is an exact science. You sort of have to be patient and fend angle. So you notice I have sort of pressed that in, the wire in, so it's uh, mimicking the shape that I've pressed the wire into. Now here comes the important part. Bring this over as close as you can to the center. Now, I am going to pull that little bend out as I pull it in, but it'll be easier for me to find it again and recreate it in a second. Then I slide on my cuff and I pull it in. Just like that. Now, I'll go back with my pliers and I'll try to get my little bend back because the next step involves threading a bead on. And the bead, should, in my case, is a four millimeter bead because the interior diameter of the cuff that it's going to sit on is four. And what you do is you basically push all that together. Now, what I typically do is I put my uh, chain nose pliers right at the top and then I pull the wire. I'll pull it through my fingers till I, I know I've got a good snug fit. I'll come down close to the end of my chain nose pliers. Now I've got a mark there that I think I'll use. And then I give it a bend. And then all I do is I repeat the steps that we did once before when we were doing the um, wire wrapped loop. Now you see I've got the beginnings of a wire wrapped loop here. And how many times am I going to wind it? I'm going to wind it until it is seated. It's seated right on top of that bead because I want it to hold the bead steady. I don't want there to be any space in between. So you keep wrapping and you keep wrapping until you literally can't wrap anymore. That bead is sitting there nice and snug now. So I'm going to cut that off close to the bead. You can see there that I have a little end to tuck in, which I will do right now. My end is tucked in. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to look for the end on one side of my coil and I'm gently going to press that down. And that'll help secure that so it doesn't slide. Now, it's nice to try and line this up and sometimes through the process of sliding it on you have a bit of fandangling to do. The next thing I'm going to do, I forgot to mention the trusty sandpaper, but I'm hoping by now that if you've been watching my channel, you know I never do anything without sandpaper. The nice fine grit automotive that I prefer. I go in, 
I give it a buff where I think I'm likely to have tool marks because tool marks and wire working, they do go hand in hand. And I'll even check, and check down there. Give that a little tweak. Okay. Now I'm going to save that little bit of wire because that might be enough to actually finish the other side. But now you go to your clasp and you'll remember when we made the clasp, I actually attached jump rings to both ends of it. There was a reason for that. Um, I'm going to reiterate it once again that um, jump rings are your safety valves for your wire work. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be um, easy to actually pull this apart. And if somebody's wearing their necklace or their bracelet and accidentally gets caught in something, you need a, a breakaway place. And the jump ring is an excellent place for that. So I've just opened my jump ring using my pair of square nose pliers. I'm going to slide that on. And twist it back in shape. Now I've got that end attached. I'll attach the clasp. All right, here's where you have enough finishing work done to do the measuring I mentioned at the outset. So say for example, let's take our little ruler here now. From the bottom of the cuff to the top of the wire loop, I have about an inch. So the top of the coil or the wire knitting goes to about the top of the coil. So you actually add about five eighths of an inch or I added five eighths of an inch to the length um, to get to the top of the wire wrap loop. In total, I, I'm adding about two and um, two and one eighth inches to the length here. So two and one eighth inches plus one, two, three, four, five eighths. So that's two and six eighths. So about two here. So if I've already got two and um, that's three quarters, actually just under three quarters. If I'm adding this much to my bracelet length and I know that my total bracelet length only needs to be eight inches. Say for instance, let's flip it around this way. I can come up. Now we're going to add on what the bead and the wire wrapped loop will add. And I'd come to here. And that's where I would cut it off to add my uh, cuff bead and loop on the other side. I'm going to make a necklace out of this so I don't have to worry about that. And I'm going to repeat this just one more time so you can watch me do it again. The first thing I do is I take the very end, I start to shape it and if, if I don't like, if I've got a little bit sticking out of the end I can easily get rid of that with my cutters. Just keep pressing and again, watch yourselves because you don't want to stick that uh, end of wire into your finger. I'm doing all my cutting over my cutting or my bead mats so I don't accidentally drop sharp bits on my kitchen floor. And I put my piece of 20 gauge wire in, grab my chain nose pliers, put a little bend in that. Actually, going to cut that off a little bit. May need to trim off a little bit more. Hmm. I think I need to go through that again. I don't think I was as high as I was on the last one. That's the other thing you want to. In order for your measurements to work, you actually have to cut off pretty much the same amount on both sides. All right. And once again, I'm going to bend this in just to make it easier to do that once I'm actually ready to thread a bead on. Slide this on and I just give it a little tug and a little twist. I 
think it might have been easier to do that from the other end this time. But anyway, it's holding. We'll go with that. And I like to go down. What I'm trying to do here is, as best I can, square up my wire so my bead sits in the center of that thing, or that thing being the cuff. One more time, threading on a bead, pulling it snugly, using my chain nose pliers to give myself a little arm strong in there. Go to my mark on my pliers, this is my Sharpie marker mark. Get my round nose pliers, come back in, go to the mark on my round nose pliers, and make my wire wrap loop over my bead. And once again, I'm going to tighten this up until there's no more room left to wrap because I want that bead to sit snugly and to behave itself. I can still wrap a little bit more. All right, now I'm going to cut this off with the good side of my cutters facing towards me. So now all I have to do is tuck my end away with my chain nose pliers. And we're going to do what we did on the other side as well, is you go and you look for the where the cuff, the end of the, the cuff, the spiral comes down. And I usually gently press that into the wire. I try not to make the press too dramatic because obviously I don't want to um, distort it. But I also don't want that wire to, um, I don't want the knitting to slide up and down. So I give it a little pinch. And then I usually arrange things as straight as I can with my fingers before going in with my sandpaper and looking to get out all those little tool marks that you invariably will put on your wire wrap loop through this process. And a few passes with the fine gauge automotive sandpaper, going in for a quick look. I don't have my magnifiers on, so you'll have to forgive me. I take this out of frame because I literally put it up by my nose to make sure that I've got all the tool marks out. But this is about it. All I have left to do now is get my clasp attached. And that just involves opening the jump ring from the other side or on the other side of the clasp, sliding that through and then closing the jump ring. And voila! You have a lovely piece of jewelry, all ready to wear and enjoy. That's it for today, folks. You've created a piece of wire knit jewelry um, using all the skills that you've acquired so far in the Wire Working 101 series. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. And if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Stay tuned. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to use Viking style wire knitting to fill a wire frame. Hope you have a great day. Bye bye.